Did you know North Carolina running back Amarion Hampton led the country with 1,071 rushing yards after contact as a true sophomore? One of the more impressive campaigns from 2023 with over 1,500 rushing yards. He was fifth in the country. We're talking about him today. Let's see all those traits that he was able to gain over 1,000 yards after contact. Contact balance, right? We talk about it. He's six foot, 220 pounds, and the true embodiment, the epitome of contact balance from all different kinds of rushing angles, attack angles, defensive attack angles, and tackling. He can break tackles all throughout the process. Fantastic job here of working through a much bigger guy, throwing him off, and then getting into the end zone. We've got a little bit of read option Y lead from North Carolina. You have a defensive back who's going to come off this left-hand side. So Drake May is going to read out the play here. Number 88 is your Y tight end who's going to follow through and lead block through the A gap. Now, a little bit of miscommunication here as you get a down block. Everyone's kind of down blocking here, almost to outside zone. But the reason that big defensive tackle is able to get in is because number 75 and 60 or 53 here miscommunicated on this defensive tackle block. It looks like the tackle missed the block, but regardless, you have this tight end, the wide tight end coming in, and he has to now change his trajectory of his path. And what does that leave? It leaves Amari and Hampton backfield one-on-one -on -one, shoulders towards the sideline very difficult to change directions and make that guy miss so what does he do all right got to power through a tackle here great job with keeping his feet underneath him he's got a pretty good center of gravity for a six foot running back and he does a fantastic job of churning his feet as he gets turned around he ends up going backwards kind of over the tackle and in to the end zone as he gets back up field you have to wrap this guy up and if you don't he's going to make you pay and even if you do wrap up, he's got great ways with fantastic movement of his legs to generate big plays after that as well. But one of the things that I love about this player is the curve linear acceleration combined with his ability to read leverage and make linebackers do what he wants. He's not as consistent pressing gaps and moving linebackers as you want him to. As a sophomore, that's understandable. Hopefully, as a junior, he's able to get that down. You've got outside zone here from North Carolina. Everyone stepping down and to their left. So he's going to read all the way through here. This defensive tackle is going to kind of scoop around and open up that B gap, right? What does that do? That forces the linebacker to have to make a decision. So as that defensive tackle comes around, this linebacker is now basically one-on-one -on -one already with Hampton as he's going to make this play, stretch it out to where he wants to. So you have that B-gap opening up right now. So what does he do best here? Is he's going to stretch this down to that B-gap. All right, you've got the down block from number 61, and now you're one-on-one -on -one with that linebacker, and he's going to force him to come, cut across the face of number 63 here. So there's that linebacker understanding he's faster to that angle. I have to get over there now. It's tougher for him to be able to get back with his shoulders turned to the sideline, which is true, but he showcases that curve linear acceleration. You can actually already see it in play as he's going to show off his ankle flexion to be able to kind of dig his foot in the ground and accelerate through that break and cut up field. Really nice job of moving that linebacker through off to the left-hand side of 63, and then taking this upfield where he's able to generate, you know, put some moves together, break a tackle, stiff arm, whatever it is, a really great job from Hampton there. North Carolina ran a lot of zone with Hampton, getting downhill quickly, allowing him to make one cuts and get upfield really where he shined. I think that as a running back, mixing in some more power concepts for him that would allow him to get downhill even quicker sometimes and into space can be kind of thrown in there, get him some more, get him into space a little bit more so he can really do things like this from an you know, pin pull or a power concept, but a nice job here to get skinny through the hole. So you got to, like I said, inside zone from under from uh, Omari and Hampton, number 63 and 65 do a really nice job of down blocks. So you've got inside zone. Everyone's kind of stepping. You have inside step first from 75, but he's going to end up getting there as well. So the guard and center here do it again, a really nice job reading you've got five guys in the box so you want to run the football right here you get that double team from them boom 63 is going to do a fan again a great job of taking him and then cutting off giving hampton a, a back to run off 
65 is going to get to number 11. And then this is where the hole opens up and he just hits it, right? Gets skinny. He's got a really kind of short base in terms of his his body makeup, his consistency, his shoulders aren't hugely far apart. And his, you know, his frame is a little bit skinnier. So he can get through holes like that very quickly, doesn't lose any acceleration. And then we see that ability once again to wind through. He's got a good stiff arm. And, and some of the, the faster guys in college football are going to be able to tackle him downfield. We are going to harp on this for young running backs. It is the one way you don't come out of football games outside of not being able to catch the football, which he absolutely can. Pass protection technique is where it all comes down. Really nice job of consistently giving the right effort. He, he does a good job there of, of cons always giving that effort. He's got the physical tools and the the want to be able to pass protect. The problem for him is, the again, the, the technique. So he's going to come out, get on Jeremiah Trotter, who's blitzing. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., excuse me. And his base is going to get just a little too wide. When you do that one, your center of gravity, you can't really generate power through. And you can get knocked back a little bit easier. And then he's going to lean, dip his head down. Hands aren't where they need to be. Shoulders are down too far as well. And again, with that wide base, oh, then you're on the ground. Easy way for a linebacker to get over and around you. And you're, luckily, Drake May is just really, really talented. And he comes out and throws a touchdown there on that play. But this is where we see the inconsistency, right? This is a good rep. He still leans a little bit. He still lowers his head a little bit too much from what you want. You don't want to see that angle so much going to continue down this way as soon as we saw this from him last time. We knew it was over. But this is better. His hands are going to come up through here and actually deliver a blow to that defensive back where it doesn't really matter. He's ineffective on the play. So the effort, the consistency, the consistency really needs to get stepped up for Hampton, but then again, we have some reps where his feet don't get too far apart. He delivers good blow through. So all of those just get better in the consistency part. And when you're able to do it against linebackers on a more consistent basis, you'll be able to be out there for far more reps as a running back, not just next year, but into the NFL. One other area I'd love to see him get better and more consistent at is staying patient behind his offensive line. This is a fun play from North Carolina and he generates a big play because he stays patient behind his line and he's able to press pop and then move guys with his eyes and intention again as well you have a RPO here from North Carolina so both of your outside tight ends on the side are going to clear path for receiver who is jet sweep fly sweep however we're going to call it out to the right hand side of the offense give that RPO feel to it and build in outside zone off of it so everyone's just going to step down and Hampton again fantastic job of following his blocks and when you can stay you know pressing inside is how you can consist consistently create that so you've got a couple of defenders here mugging up the middle 51's coming here you got defense tackle 50 56 coming around where you want you don't want him on this outside right you want to move that defensive tackle from flashing to the outside to bringing it him inside and making the block much easier on your offensive lineman so he's gonna press this gap here 56 comes across that block is much easier then he follows number 53 around and he presses back to the inside again moving defenders so Consistently pressing gaps, moving defenders is how he can continue to not just get to the outside and use that curvilinear acceleration that he has, but it's going to create big plays. Now, this one came back because of a penalty, but just wanted to showcase his nuance that he does showcase at times instead of just getting downhill as, as fast as you can get in to that second level or the outside gear where you can be a much more explosive player. And we just talked a little bit about his ability to sink down and get skinny between holes he's a very good rusher in between the tackles which we haven't seen a lot of in the nfl from guys coming out they, they typically like to get to the outside we have the shanahan offenses running tons of outside zone and things like that but when you're able to run like y insert duo things downhill with these running backs that are six foot and like i said he's 220 pounds and he's powerful really fun play here from the offensive line where you're going to get number seven number 81 inserting in here and then he's just going to follow it and go right up the right up the field and then again 
contact balance, showcasing that he can run between the tackles with power and explosion. That is what we want to see going into the next level. And again, really nice job from some of these offensive linemen turning their players to give him walls to run through. When you have holes that are that show show up and disappear very quickly, he does a really nice job of finding it, getting into it, and then getting upfield and moving the chains, just consistently moving the chains. One of the things that he does best, even though their offensive line last year was not very good, and he had tons of hit at the line of scrimmage and stuffs, which are tackles made behind the line of scrimmage. This is, again, showcasing that speed. Really nice job of just bowling through a defensive ta a defensive player that's coming across, trying to scrape across that formation. Lowers his shoulder, gets into open space, and then takes this all the way through. And then the fantastic effort from Nate Wiggins, who, again, is one of the fastest players in college football last year. Just a little bit of split zone with that tight end action coming off the other side with RPO movement. And then just bowling guys over. Like, I just love that ability. And then, again, again we just have to... Tip your hat to Nate Wiggins there, but just that power right there. Number zero coming over, boom, on the ground. And great effort all the way through this play from Hampton. I'm not worried about fumbles myself. He only had two on the year last year. So going forward, something just to keep an eye on and monitor. But from a speed, acceleration burst, contact balance standpoint, he has all the tools. And then you add in the inconsistent but flashes of pressing, and popping. We saw again, get into that hole, popping outside, be more patient. You can do all of that, which is going to really open up things for Amari and Hampton. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown here. Make sure you hit that like for the video and sub to the TDN YouTube channel. We're going to have more of these every single week. If you guys keep your eyes on Amari and Hampton this year and see what he does next, have yourselves a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time.